let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight o lord our rock and our redeemer amen <clears throat> dear once again i greet you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ let us thank god for enabling us to enter into another lenten season we <clears throat> i would like to share with you few thoughts based on the scripture portion that was read to us today particularly having one question in mind how the lord wants us to observe lent how the lord wants us to observe the lent whenever i enter into lenten season i always remember the event very interesting event that took place a long time ago when i served in arakonam a person came to me and said pastor <clears throat> we had a wedding in our hometown in south india extreme place but we would like to have the reception in arakonam then i said what's the problem there is no problem you can have it now pastor the problem is the reception falls within the lenten season then i asked him what's wrong with that see i have difficulty whether to have mutton biryani for the reception because it falls within lenten season <clears throat> then i told him see <clears throat> days have gone by when people were very very strict and not taking non vegetarian food during the lenten season nowadays people are not very particular about it so you just ask other people and do accordingly so he went and asked different people and on the day of reception when i went there <coughs> he made arrangement for both 50% mutton biryani 50% vegetarian so his problem was solved about the problem remains to the people with the people who came for the reception see as i was standing in front people were coming and they were slowly moving to one place so i was wondering why they are going away from me then two young people came and talked to me and one person said pastor we will go to non vegetarian section <clears throat> Jesus himself has said it's okay then i asked him when did jesus say you can have mutton biryani in the lent and he said pastor jesus said what goes inside will not defile you what comes out defiles you so we can have mutton biryani then there was another person young person he told me pastor don't listen to him he will make you to go to the non vegetarian section and make you to eat mutton biryani and then he will go around the congregation and tell them pastor is eating mutton biryani in the lenten season so don't listen to him you know using the same bible verse he says smoking is sin but drinking is not sin then i asked him how do you explain that see when you drink it goes inside it doesn't pollute you smoke it comes out jesus said what comes out pollutes you so don't listen to him see even though this took place many years ago it talks about and misconceptions that we have with regard to lenten season of course traditionally some people don't eat non vegetarian food during this lenten season um then women they don't have the flowers wear the flowers on the head and we leave out many things now there are 
two different things with regard to what we leave out one we leave leave out certain things not because they are sinful but as a mark of self sacrifice as a mark of giving importance to god we leave out certain things certain expensive things now the tradition says when you abstain from taking meat or you don't wear the flower on your head what you must do you save the amount in those days they used to give undis okay so people used to save in that so on the good friday they would come and dedicate it offering so the expense that you would have spent on certain things you give to the lord now certain other things you want to leave out because they are sins or things that are not pleasing in the sight of god cursing others using angry words irritating others and there are so many other things lord wants us to leave out those things now it's not good to leave out those things during the lenten season alone probably our ancestors wanted us to make a start in this lenten season those days many people used to smoke and drink and the church encouraged them not to drink not to smoke and certain other bad habits during this lenten season so that they would leave out those things after being practiced from abstaining those things in this lenten season now suppose a person leaves out smoking and drinking in the lenten season and on easter day he drinks one full bottle if he smokes one packet of cigarette there is no use in that so we have to differentiate between the two things and be very very careful in what we are leaving out whether we are leaving it as a sacrifice self sacrifice and save the amount save the amount to give to the lord or to the poor people or the lord wants us to leave out certain things permanently once uh, in uh, good shepherd <clears throat> we wanted to keep dustbins in different uh, places in our campus so one person came to broadway and bought bought uh, many dustbins and it was interesting see, to see the person who sold those dustbins printed certain captions on them in one dustbin it said drop your envy inside in another dustbin drop your anger inside drop your empty unforgiveness so they have written many things on the dustbins the idea is the lord wants you and me to give up the things that are not pleasing in the sight of god in order to help us i have chosen this beautiful passage matthew chapter 6 verse 1 to 18 there we see <clears throat> jesus christ talking about three religious practices no for sure that he was talking to the believing community he picked up three religious activities he was not against these religious activities but he was against wrong ways of doing these things so as a, as christians we should bear in mind or ponder upon our life and ask this question i am doing many religious practices doing many activities but am i doing them in the right way in god intended way or do i have my own own way of doing it own motives for doing that's what we are going to see 
now with regard to the sermon on the mount i would like to share certain things because that is related to the lord wants us how the lord wants us to learn these things if you look at matthew chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 i have given certain important phrases if you have the bible you can turn along with me to matthew chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 there we see the real setting for the sermon on the mount matthew says in verse 1 seeing the crowd he went up so the first point that we note is that jesus went up till then he was with the crowd on the ground and he started going up meaning if you want to learn from me come away from this crowd come away from this routine things take a time to come close to me then the scripture says he sat down he sat down probably go to the next one yeah he sat down what does that mean the lord wants us to learn in a quiet way not in a hurry bury way the lord wants us to learn sitting quietly keeping your mind calm and open then matthew says his disciples came near him that is only his disciples not the crowd many people listen to the word of god but they were not interested in jesus christ many people heard the word of god preaching to the crowd but only certain people wanted to learn more so as you read the sermon on the mount or today's passage have the mind to learn as disciples of jesus christ the next one that we see is that he opened his mouth and taught them what is this opened his mouth and taught them can you teach without opening your mouth then i found opening one's mouth and speaking means in hebrew context or in hebrew culture a person is opening his heart and pouring out everything from his heart so that the listeners would learn many things he had the thirst that that made the disciples to learn more so as we approach this let's bear in mind that we have come away from our routine work sitting in a church in a calm and quiet atmosphere and jesus has poured out from his heart and we are gathered here with the mindset to learn something new from jesus now having this in mind let us approach this passage as i said earlier there are three different phrases that clearly tells us that jesus christ is talking about three three different things in verse 2 he says when you give to the needy in verse 5 when you pray and in verse 16 when you fast so he was addressing three things and then particularly i want you to note the word you now here he was not addressing the crowd he was addressing the selected people only those who had the thirst to learn from jesus and he said when you pray don't worry about other people there are many people who are praying there are many people who are giving charity but don't look at them i want you to look at your life i want you to look at the way in which you practice your religious activities so here jesus christ is talking personally to each and every one of us what do you do are you just simply imitating what has gone by what others are doing what are you doing in what way you are doing in what way you are praying in what way you are giving charity in what way you fast and pray having realized that i want you to highlight some of the things that comes out of this passage 
that we have to bear in mind before we reflect on the three things charity prayer and fasting first one he was talking about two different groups don't be like them one group is hypocrites the other one gentiles don't be like them hypocrites who are they they are the, they are the people who try to pretend try to show to others what they are not what they are not they pretend to be very religious but they are not religious they pretend to love god but they don't love god they have other motives other selfish motives in doing certain religious practices that we that that's what jesus condemns a second group is gentiles how can we describe them they are the people who do not know no one true god they have their own gods they have their own idols they worship them and they follow their own religion taught by some people who were not worshipers of one true god whereas the believing community they believe in one true god and particularly i emphasize the word no who are the believing community who are not gentiles the believing community are those who know no one true god now in the old testament as well as in the new testament in hebrew culture knowing somebody is knowing them thoroughly knowing somebody means relating to them knowing somebody means you have intimate relationship with them now in the old testament as well as the new testament <clears throat> the word knowing refers to husband and wife adam knew his wife joseph did not knew mary till jesus was born that means the closer relationship in the same way during this lenten season the lord wants us to come close to him know him in an intimate way that's why we are called to read the bible pray fast and pray or give to the poor doing the will of god now in order to be very careful in what we do as religious activities the lord clearly talks about certain things let me share there are four different things let me share those four things one <clears throat> jesus differentiate between differentiates between the outward action or external action and internal motive outward actions people see inner motive god sees so we have to be very very careful with in knowing with what motive we do all these religious practices because god knows the inner motives take for example why do you come to church this is one among many other religious activities that we see we come here to worship is that all if that is the one praise god you are blessed are you coming here to meet other people your relatives known people are you here to sit in your own place where you have been sitting for many years so that you will have a comfortable seat in the church no the lord judges our inner motive we are here to worship god to have closer relationship with him so the lord looks at our inner motive first thing that we have to bear in mind the second thing he points out is that while doing all this religious practices don't intend to receive praise from men 
don't get involved in god's ministry so that people would appreciate you people would praise you if you try to get involved in your ministry whether it be part of the choir or sunday school or youth fellowship women's fellowship men's fellowship or parivalaya ministry whatever it is if you get involved in these things just to receive praise from people yes jesus says yes you will be praised you will be appreciated you will be acknowledged in the church but there ends your reward if you do it for the lord the lord will see and he will bless you the next thing that we see is that the lord <clears throat> differentiates between reward from men and reward from god or doing things in secret doing things in a public way now as jesus portrays these three things one person he wants to give to the poor people and he wants to show it off so he makes the trumpets to be sound in the synagogue we can say in the church making announcement or doing things when people see and then he talks about praying we all know the jewish people always used to hold the hands out and pray to god and many people started doing it in the synagogue as well as in the marketplace as muslims do wherever they at that particular time wherever they are they have to pray in the same way jews also would stand in the marketplace lift their hands up and start praying so that people would appreciate them they are doing these activities in public to show off to receive praise from god even with regard to the fasting some people look very sad put on a long face just to show they are very religious no putting on a long face doesn't mean you are religious see after serving the lord for 39 years i have come to know those who pretend to be religious those are religious really religious i can sense that sometimes god reveals to me there are people who pretend to be very religious but when you look at their life they are exposed when we look at the way they relate to husbands and wife they are exposed when they do their work in the workplace they are exposed when we search for honesty in the life they are exposed so when we are involved in god's work or do religious activities the lord looks at the way with what motives we do all these things now let me come to the right way of doing these things charity yes when you give to someone let your right hand doesn't know what you give in left or oh, your left hand what you give in right hand that is you yourself forget about it do it in secret way then heavenly father who looks at what you have done he will reward you openly when you pray don't take it as a time to boast about your spiritual life many a time i just share with the candidates for confirmation and tell them see prayer is nothing but talking to jesus wherever you pray whether in public or in private close your eyes think that jesus christ is standing before you and you are simply talking to him simply talking to him forget about other people many a time people think about the other people who are standing around them now some of the bad things i have uh, noticed i just share it so that you will understand 
in what way we are called to pray there's no harm in quoting bible verses but if you say lord you have said in matthew chapter 7 verse 28 that is wrong you are talking to god you want to show off your bible knowledge to other people god doesn't know the, the know the difference he doesn't need the reference but some people do it just to try to boast sometimes in prayer people start preaching that's wrong sometimes people attack other people through prayer we we should avoid all these things the best way to avoid all these things is that when you close your eyes think that jesus christ is standing before you you are just talking to him then you will pour out your heart whether you are alone or in public now prayer life is the strength of a spiritual life of course fasting as i said in the morning if you fast spend time in reading the word of god and spend time in prayer if you simply fast and do your routine work there is no effect there's no effect many people do it many people fast and go to work that's not right when you fast it helps you to earnestly pray to god you will have the thirst to know about god by reading the word of god so when you fast read the word of god and pray finally what i would like to share with you with regard to this prayer charity and fasting is that all should come out of love towards god love towards other people love towards self for example the first one charity it should be done love towards other people if you do it just to show off there is no value in that take pity on other people have compassion on other people when people suffer it should touch your heart out of love towards those people you give and the lord will bless you when you pray have the love towards god the lord wants to speak to us prayer is not just one way traffic you tell something to god and close the prayer no whenever you pray have some time spend some time talk to god and allow god to talk to you dear brothers and sisters in christ this comes out of my own experience so spend time in quietness and you will experience god speaking to you giving you many bible verses giving you many instructions and he will tell you what to do and what not to do and finally as i said earlier fasting it helps you to humble yourself fasting helps you to humble yourself before the sight of god so that you could receive god's blessing if you love yourself spend some time in fasting that will enable you to improve your self control self control it will help you to humble yourself before god and when you humble yourself before god god will lift you high let's pray loving god we thank you for this blessed day as we gather here thank you for giving us clear instructions how to observe our lenten season how to do our religious activities how to give up certain things and for what purposes lord help us to be very careful with regard to our inner motives for involving in your ministry in religious activities 
whether it's prayer or coming to the church or participating in various ministries of the church lord help us to seek your reward your appreciation your praise not the appreciation of people not reward from men and women help us to do everything directing our love towards you and other people so that we will grow in our spiritual life and please you please you as we lead our christian life once again we dedicate ourselves to your loving hands o lord we have begun this lenten season in a blessed way in a proper way coming to the church participating in the worship service and taking part in the holy communion strengthen us o lord strengthen us in our spiritual life so that we could come close to you and lead a life that is pleasing in your sight in jesus name we pray amen